Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller, the podcast. I'm joined by Seth. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for finding us on, uh, on, the, on the internet. Now, these shows originally aired on Brookings Radio, but now they're all here for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. There you go. Sit back, enjoy the show, relax. Uh, let us know if you want to see anything on future shows. As we said, the, this comes out live in the Brookings area, but enjoy this archive episode. Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Last week, we told you about the work of a USD anthropologist in Peru that led to a new craft beer. However, attempting to recreate or reinterpret an ancient beer is not new. In fact, craft brewers have been doing it for years. Beer is an ancient product brewed for thousands of years all over the world. Beer has an incredibly long history. I mean, beer has a history that coincides with civilization itself, so... There's a lot of individuals that have, have spent their entire careers kind of tracing down the, the history of beers and, you know, uh, what importance they brought to the, the civilizations that made them. And it's, it's a quite a fascinating, fascinating study of, of just the how, the how the drink grew up with civilization. Seth Cook there from Wooden Legs Brewing in Brookings. He says... There's even a theory that beer helps spur the development of civilization. Right, in, in the Fertile Crescent back there, they believe that, that beer is actually what got people from wandering and gathering and hunting and became agrarian societies. You know, there's a there's a, a, a standing theory that just the, the agricultural world started because they wanted to cultivate barley. So that it's it's old it's really old and of course it's been interpreted in many many different cultures beer dates back at least 7000 years and is probably even older it may predate baked bread there's an 18000 year old site in egypt where they may have been making beer although that's not confirmed yet and in many societies including egyptian it was at least as important as bread as a source of calories and nutrition safer and you know and didn't spoil as quickly as bread. So uh, uh, beers truly were, a, you know, everybody jokes and say they're a staple part of the diet. And the, the reality is, is that beers were. I mean, that was that was a part of the nutrition, the, the required nutrition to, to live uh, came from the drinking of beer. Now, when we say beer, that doesn't necessarily mean the type of beer that people, you know, see today, the, you know, the stuff that comes in a can that's fizzy and, and you know, has the flavor of hops in it. Beer really is defined in this category by anything that's fermentable, it's not grapes, obviously, that's wine, but there could be corn-based beer, there can be wheat-based beer, uh, obviously there's the barley-based beer. Um, not, they don't necessarily have to have hops in them. Hops came along much later. Most of these early beers would have been lower in alcohol content than most modern beers, and almost all were probably a little funky and at least a little tart. The funk, a lot of these beers came from the natural occurring yeast, you know, um, they would used to ferment with open crocks, so the yeast was very regionalized. It was a naturally occurring yeast. Along with that yeast would come other microbes that would add some sour and funky notes as well. There are some modern brewers, especially in Belgium and some American craft brewers, who still ferment their beers in open containers to produce wild ales and a few other traditional styles. The earliest surviving beer recipe is from ancient Iraq and is 3,900 years old. More on ancient beers when Beer Untapped continues. Anaerobic, isolation, alcoholic, fermentation, and ABH oxidation. Give me a beer. Welcome back to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. We're talking ancient beers today. As different cultures continued to make beer down through the centuries, it formed the basis for many of the beer styles still brewed today. The different regions, because of the yeast and because of the barley, that's really the, that's the basis of different styles. Uh, German beers, of course, they didn't set out to make you know, these very specific German-style lagers. They made that because that is what they had available, and that's what people drank. And uh, the people of England used the ingredients they have. Um, and of course, South American breweries and Middle Eastern breweries, and you know, they, they made the things that they had. One of the cool things about the emergence of craft beer is the efforts of many brewers to revisit old and even ancient styles. In some elements, craft beers and craft brewers have an intention to detail to reproduce some of these styles that hasn't been seen for decades. You know, there's been some styles that breweries have said, "I'm going to make it, I'm going to make this beer, and I'm going to do." Uh, with such great dignity to the actual style, I'm going to go get the 
Barlin hops from this region and, and try to make a faithful reproduction. Or on the other end of the spectrum, that same brewery, the next brew day, may make something that is completely obscure and it has no relation to any known beer style, and there's really no right answer on that. There's no bounds on that. They're both are both are right ways to do craft beer. So it's a it's it's pretty amazing. And and people look to the U.S. often because we have that flexibility. You know, the, we have uh, kind of the melting pot. You know, mentality where we can make one great beer uh, just based on whims and the other great beer is a perfect replication of something that came from before. Um, there's no, nowhere else in the world do you really have that diversity of brewing right now. Dogfish Head Brewing out of Delaware has made several ancient ales, including Midas Touch. That was based on evidence found in a Turkish tomb believed to have belonged to the real King Midas. That same brewery also makes some very off-the-wall beers. Well, they haven't done an ancient beer. Wooden Legs did their interpretation of a lost American beer style, the Pennsylvania Swanky. Yeah, we did the Pennsylvania Swanky. Um, we've talked about doing a couple of them. Uh, what I, what we wanted to do, and, and it, we haven't quite had the capacity to do it, is maybe do an interpretation of an old style ale using local ingredients, whether we do some corn or those things. These are all really, really fun and really, really good ideas, but we haven't had the uh, elbow room in the brewing schedule to put one of these through yet. That USD anthropologist we referenced at the start of the show and featured last week, his name is Matt Sayre, and he hopes we see more revisiting of ancient beers. This has been a fun thing in the past for people to do is, like, try and, you know, travel through time with food or drink and figure out what it would have been like to be in, you know, ancient Mediterranean world or in ancient Egypt. What would the people who made the pyramids, what would their beer have tasted like? And I look forward to more of it because I certainly think one of the exciting things about teaching students about the ancient world is, is having them really picture themselves living in that time. And one thing that can help transport you back to the past is just eating different foods and trying different drinks and realizing that, you know, somebody a thousand years ago was probably drinking something just like this. Also this week, an interesting new beer festival coming up over in Minnesota, the Jack Pint Beer Tasting Event at Jackpot Junction of Morton, Minnesota, is Saturday, 4.30 to 7 p.m., featuring about a dozen Minnesota breweries, including a few interesting ones from the Twin Cities, as well as Shells and Brow Brothers. Tickets for that, 25 bucks. And don't forget the celebration of New Orleans, Saturday, April 9th at Wooden Legs in Brookings. Nolanite, a crawfish boil, New Orleans beers. Be sure to plan ahead for that. That's it for this week's show. Until next time, drink local and drink responsibly. Thank you for listening to this archived edition of Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Feel free to listen to other episodes And if there's anything you'd like us to talk about on a future show, please let us know. Thanks again.